Hey family, this is Pastor Kay. Wanted to take some time and share with you our leadership lesson from Matthew chapter 6, part 1. Tonight, what we're going to be dealing with in our uh, list of lessons is the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when you witness, we start witness with understanding wisdom and sharing wisdom. And then you have inspiration. You move to testimony. And then after that, you have the name of Jesus Christ. You move from there to being an example, understanding the plan of salvation, and you also are walking in the spirit. So that acronym WITNESS gives us many different principles in terms of how we can effectively share our faith with other people. Tonight, we're going to deal with the name of Jesus Christ. Now, witnesses must witness to the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus that brings us salvation. And so when we witness, we can't just be witnessing with good works or just witnessing by being nice. We must express the name of Christ. This is really given to us in an example in Acts chapters three and four. And in those two chapters, the word name is mentioned almost a dozen times. Now, uh, I have five principles that I have included in the lesson in which the, the word name is used in that particular passage of Scripture. Let me tell you. In Acts chapter three and four, we are told of the story of how uh, we have Peter and John on their way to a temple. They see a lame man laying uh, at the gate as they're going in. The man asks for alms and Peter looks down at him and says, silver and gold have we none. But that which we do have, we give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. The man gets up. It's a miracle. The man leaps and dances and runs all around through the temple. People recognize that this was the man who was lame, who used to lay at the gate. But now this man has been healed. And it was healed through the name of Jesus Christ. Peter explains to the crowd, listen, do not think that this miracle happened because of our godliness, because we were so close to God. This miracle happened through the name of Jesus. Boy, when the Pharisees, the ones that had killed Jesus and the teachers of the law and the leaders in the temple heard that Peter was preaching in the name of Jesus, man, they arrested James, I'm sorry, they, were met, they arrested Peter and John and they, they uh, took them in and they interrogated them. Okay. In that interrogation, they said, who? So this story continues to talk about the name of Jesus Christ. And here are five principles that I like to bring out of this story. Number one, when it comes to the name, we call on the name in prayer. That's what Peter and John did in the story. In the story, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. They were calling on the name of the Lord in order to produce that blessing and that miracle. Here's another thing. We must defend the name of Jesus with our apologetics. So when they were challenged, listen, when they were challenged, people wanted to know how did this man get healed? They could say it was in the name of Jesus and the declaration of that name that this man was healed. And they were able to explain that the word of God said that in the name of God, there would be power. Now, not only do we defend the name of God and call on the name of Jesus, but we also represent that name with godly living. And so here's a great verse that comes out of Acts chapter four. When, when Peter and John were being interrogated by the Pharisees and by the leaders of the temple and the teachers of the law, here's what the teachers of the law said about them. They said, these guys are unlearned, they are untrained, but we can tell that they had been with Jesus. 
When we spend time with God and we exert godliness, people should be able to tell in our lives that we have been with Jesus. So we must represent the name. Not only do we represent, but we also must name the name. We must say it. So I need to live a godly life. I need to be an example. But I also need to let the name of Jesus come off my lips. And in that story with Peter and John, the authorities that had interrogated them, after they finished, they said, get out of here. And they said, don't say anything else in the name of Jesus. Okay, but Peter said, I don't know about you and I don't know if you think it's better to obey God or man, but we're going to obey God and we must name the name of Jesus. Why? Because there is no other name given under heaven by which people must be saved. We have to say the name. And then the other thing is we got to declare the name. Now you say, what's the difference between saying it and declaring it? Here's the difference that I'm making in this particular principle. Declaring the name of Jesus is an act of spiritual warfare. The enemy will rise up whenever we try and represent. The enemy will rise up when we call on him in in prayer. The enemy will rise up when we are living a godly life. And we got to know that there is also power in the name of Jesus to deal with the devil. And so uh, in Acts chapter 4, verse 30, the disciples having been released by the authorities, go back to the rest of the church and they explain what had happened to them. And then after they have this, ex- this explanation, everybody gets together in a big prayer meeting and they begin to pray. And here's what they pray. They say, now, Lord, consider their threats against us and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So they prayed that God would back them up. And they prayed in the name of Jesus and the power of God came down from heaven and shook the entire area. And that's what happens when we exert our authority to declare the name of Jesus against spiritual powers and principalities. Now, I would have us to do this as our leadership exercise. Think about that verse I just read. Okay. And think about what the disciples and the, and the Christians did. When they found themselves intimidated or under challenge, they didn't back down, but they prayed. And they asked for the Spirit of God to give them the power to walk in the name of God. And so, in our lesson tonight, I have prepared a prayer that I'm going to ask each of you to pray every day for a week. And this prayer reads like this. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I would walk with you today. Please forgive me of the sins in my heart. Please fill me so I can witness about Jesus in the power of his name. Now, these will be available to you at church and we'll have them online as well. Want you to get that prayer down. And your assignment is to pray that prayer every morning and seek God to fill you so that you can be a witness with power in the name of Jesus. Your homework is also this. As you do this, I want you to select a testimony of what happened when you prayed this prayer. Throughout your day, throughout the week, as you pray this prayer, God's going to do something powerful. I want you to take that testimony down and I want you to be prepared to share it next week. This is Pastor Kay. And just know that we believe in God for you, that you will be the leader that you were meant to be. God bless you. and God keep you.